Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and right here we've got some leftover writ dye. I just dyed 113 grams of cotton yarn. There, It started off with 16 cups of water and two-thirds of a cup of salt. And now I have a loosely twisted hank of stroll fingering weight yarn from Knit Picks. It is dry. And I am going to submerge this into this vat of dye. Now, there is no vinegar yet. I need to add some. <laughs> uh, I am going to go ahead and add a third of a cup of white vinegar because that's the measuring component I have right now. And yeah, we'll see what happens. I don't know if we'll get a lot of resist because the salt might slow the color absorption. I'm not entirely sure, but we'll certainly see if the color exhausts. You can see, you know, the yarn, ooh, okay, I already see, I don't wanna move it too much. I see some shade differentials from the twist. Ooh, I'm excited. This is a really nice rose pink so far, and I can't wait to see sort of how it'll turn out. I'll try to come out in about 10 minutes to check on our progress. And the Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. We use this base all the time, and the pot is currently on a low heat. It has only been about seven or eight minutes but clearly my yarn needs a friend. There's enough dye in here. So I grabbed a second lightly twisted hank, a stroll fingering weight yarn, and I'm gonna add this to the dye pot too. Now of course these twists will not be that similar. You know, even if I had put them in at the same time, we wouldn't have necessarily ended up with identical yarn. But you can see such the color differential. Sometimes having a ton of extra dye around can really make a nice difference. But I'm gonna go ahead and remove thing one. And place it gently over here. Ooh, you can see from the resist that there's some white left behind. And the, the dye bath is starting to clear. I think in, you know, not even 10 minutes, we should start to see uh, very little color left in the pot. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this approximately 10 minutes or so, and we'll see how much color is left. It's been around seven or eight minutes, and I'm not seeing a lot more progress with the color exhaustion. This is a beautiful, beautiful yarn. Yeah, I think that that last bit might just be uh, not gonna to bind, but we currently have two really beautiful yarns that I want to let cool completely before we think about washing them or maybe over dyeing them. Let's wash. All right, oh, we're coming untwisted. Wash and reveal these yarns. This one really does, ooh, remind me of a rose petal. But look at that. All those white patches. That is lovely. And then this one, oh, it's funny. These are very coordinating with one another. But, uh, yeah, there's just a stark contrast between the white and then the, the medium pink. Then the first one has those brighter tones. And look at that. Barely any color is coming out. So, I'm gonna add some dish soap. So now the question I pose to all of you is, should I over dye these or leave them as is? Right now, even with the huge amount of contrast and the colors, I'm trying to believe it as is. I think that they are absolutely stunning. Okay, the soap is getting a little more dye to come out. But, 
Anyway, while I ponder the future of these beautiful, of this beautiful sock yarn, I am uh, gonna rinse until the water runs clear. If I need to, I will do soap another time, and then I'm gonna go hang them up to dry. By adding these twisted hanks of yarn into the dye bath of leftover writ dyes that had some salt and vinegar in it, we were able to get two different colorways that really coordinate with one another nicely. We added one loosely twisted hank of yarn first, and then after a little while, when it was clear all the dye wasn't gonna exhaust, we added a second one, which gave us this more medium tone colorway where we don't have the as deep a saturation of color as we see with the first skein. One of the things that's really remarkable to me is that the bare patches don't feel white here. They feel very much off-white and like a yellow or cream. Compared to some bare yarn, uh, this is Stroll Glimmer, not Stroll, there is a color difference. It does, has picked up a little bit of yellow. Um, so it really isn't 100% undyed. I did find that in cotton, writ dyes can actually penetrate pretty far into a ball of yarn, but the color seems to strike these wool, superwash wool nylon blends a little faster. Dyeing twisted hanks of yarn like this is a really fun technique to get a random non-repeating colorway. And you don't have to stop after just one round. You could twist these up again, pop it into another color, and get even more layers of color um, on your yarn. But I was so happy with the way the pinks and this off-white sort of worked together in these yarns that I knew I wanted to stop after the first step. These pink hanks of, of a non-repeating color race really have a vintage feel to them. I'm not sure if that's because of this sort of cream color that versus just the, the bare white, but it really has more of a cream, warm undertone to it. But something about this makes me think of rose petals, and I think that they are just stunning. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching this video. I, I'm really into dyeing twisted hanks of yarn these days, and I hope to explore this technique a lot more. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. And if you would like to support me on a more personal level, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Patreon is a platform where people can back and support the creators that they enjoy, and I have some really fun perks in exchange for your patronage. Thank you so much for watching.